water heaters, which is better, gas or electric, or on-demand, tankless, maybe even solar. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference in the water heaters and the money you can save by using different water heaters. So the easiest way to tell if you have a gas or electric water heater is by looking at the front. This is a gas control valve. And there's actually a gas valve coming out of the wall, then it has a line that comes to it and comes in the side. This gas control valve lets you know how you've got your water heater set. This is really your thermostat. So on the inside of this, it's got a piece that goes inside the tank that actually checks the temperature of the water heater and controls the gas and the flame to let it know when to make the water hotter. If anybody ever asks you, do you have a gas or electric water heater, it's real easy to tell by looking at the front. The gas control valve, or you're gonna have a panel that is removable that actually has a thermostat and a heating element behind it. Now, most big water heaters have two elements, a high one and a low one and two thermostats. Now the thermostats actually attach to the tank so that they know how hot the water is to tell the power when to kick on and heat up the element. The heating element is really what's inside that heats up the water on an electric water heater. I'm going to show you some things on the inside that help make a difference, but one more thing on the gas water heater. Up on the top, if you've got the round silver pipe coming up out of the middle of it, that's your gas flue. And it may be three inch, it may be four inch, but having that is what gets the bad gases out of your house. That way, those gases go out the roof and vent out into the atmosphere. So now let me show you what's on the inside. Now I'm gonna start with the gas water heater because there's a few more parts. I'm also gonna tell you what they have in common. So the dip tube actually comes in the cold water and it brings the water in, the cold water in, down towards the bottom of the tank. Now the reason that it does this is because heat rises. On the gas water heater, you've got your burner assembly down at the bottom under there, and when it kicks on, I mean, it literally lights up a flame. And then what happens, those fumes that I was talking about, they go right up the middle in this flue. Now as you see, this flue has a baffle in it, and it's got pieces built on it that keep that heat coming outside. That way it heats up the inside also. So you've got a heating source down here, but when those hot gases come up, it heats that metal on the inside, and that actually helps make them more efficient. So when this dip tube comes in, it has holes in it. And what those holes do, they kind of push the water out to help circulate the calcium and magnesium in the bottom to keep it in the water like it should. Everyone knows they should flush their water heaters at least once a year. What I like about these, these come with a brass drain valve. And I like that because they don't corrode up as much and you don't have as many problems with them. The flue, as you see, is not on the inside of the electric water heater. Where the gas water heater heats with the burner and the flue pipe, the electric water heater heats with elements. Now there's one in the very bottom and it's about eight inches off the bottom of the tank. And then there's the other one up here. Now remember, if you ever have to change your heating elements, turn the power off before you start. Turn the power off, drain the water heater out, and then you can open these panels. You can change out the thermostats and heating elements if you use the right ones. On a gas water heater, you can change out the burner assembly. You can change out the gas control valve, the thermal coupling. Everything here can be changed out. The only thing that you don't change out is the tank. I tell people all the time, as long as your water heater is not leaking, you can probably fix it. But the question is, do you really want to? Go back and think about it. How long am I going to be here? How much is it going to cost? And would that money be better off spent on a new water heater? The parts you see on an electric water heater are at the very top. You've got the panel that you can remove. That's where your power comes in. That's where you want to test it before you start working on anything. Test it. Make sure the breaker's turned off before you open and undo anything. Now, I know you've got to open the top to test it, but don't be opening the sides or anything like that until you've turned the power off and you've got everything set. The drain valve is the other one that is really important. Guys, if you flush this water heater every year, 
you're going to keep the calcium and magnesium out of the bottom of it and you're actually going to make it last longer. Now the other piece that they have in common, on the inside right here you see the anode rod. Now I recommend to customers that you replace that anode rod at the end of the first year. The reason being, an anode rod is made out of calcium, magnesium, aluminum, different things, and what it does, it's a sacrificial rod. Meaning, any little impurities on the inside of the tank, as they start to form, the anode rod sacrifices itself and sends pieces out to seal those up. That's why we recommend to people, you don't flush a water heater after six or seven years, five or six years, if you've never flushed it before. If you start flushing it from the very beginning, you're not gonna get a lot of buildup, but you're also not gonna lose the parts that the anode rod has sacrificed to repair. The other thing they both have in common is a temperature and pressure relief valve. And why that's important, that is the safety feature for a water heater. That is what is gonna keep the water heater from getting too hot and either expanding and rupturing or actually exploding. It can happen, but it doesn't happen very often because water heaters are built to be safe. I've showed you some common things that they have, and I've also showed you the differences in them. The other big difference is a gas water heater. This one here, the insulation is a lot thinner than the electric. They build them that way so the electric can hold the hot water longer. If they made them that thick on the gas water heaters, the tank would even get bigger. They have made them more efficient lately, and that has made the tanks bigger, so you may not be able to get a 50 gallon water heater in the exact same hole you took it out as before. Knowing your water heater and knowing what you can do to repair it can save you a lot of money. The thing to remember is, make sure you shut off your ball valve up top. Each water heater should have a valve coming into it on the cold water side. I've seen them on the hot water side going out for complete isolation, but to be honest, as long as you've got the cold water shut off coming in and water's not crossed anywhere, you shouldn't have any problems at all. Guys, if you've ever had to work on a water heater and change out any parts of it, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what did you do and how did you do it. Now, I mentioned turning off the power to the hot water heater before you work on it. Another big tip that's gonna save you a lot of headache, do not turn the electricity back on until you've done all the repairs. And what I mean by that is, if you're changing the elements out, you need to shut the water and drain it down. So you do that, you remove the heating elements, you put the elements back in, you fill it back with water. Not until that point do you turn the electricity back on. The reason being, if you turn the electricity on and you don't have water on this, it's gonna pop, it's gonna break, it's gonna burn up. Then you're gonna be right back in the same problem you've had, and I've actually had these burn up and break so bad, it was hard to get them out. Guys, think about it. Turn the power off to your water heater before you start working it. Drain it down. Change your elements, change your thermostats, change what you're changing, and then fill it back up with water and then turn your electricity back on. Now, you don't have to shut off the water to change out the thermostats, just the electricity. But my thing is, if you're changing out the thermostats, go ahead and change out the elements. Now you've pretty much rebuilt your hot water heater. One other little tip, if I had a water heater with a plastic drain valve, I would actually want to change that out to a brass one before I ever use that water heater. Those plastic valves are okay, but the corrosion gets in there and they get where they don't work well. The metal ball valves for a drain valve on a water heater work perfect, and I think that's a great investment. So guys, now you know the difference between gas and electric water heaters. Do me a favor, let me know below which one you have. Which one is most popular in the areas where you live? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Check out the video where we did the flush on the tankless water heater. As a homeowner, that can save you a lot of money. As a plumber, that can help you make a lot of money. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.